Okay, hey, this is the Swedish guitar nerd, and uh, this is the first for me. Uh, I thought I'd do a rig tour and check some other some other people's gear out. And um, where should I start? But with a world famous super guitarist, Vic Zeno of Hardcore Superstar. So welcome to my channel. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to my dungeon. <laughs> yeah. We found our way to the rock dungeon. So don't ask me the right questions or otherwise you won't get out. <laughs> I've locked in here forever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about your gear and... Um, well, where should we start but with guitars then? Mm -hmm. So, which... I, you showed me them and which of them would you have to start? I, right now I got three of them with me on, on this tour. It's, uh, it's a Les Paul custom from 91 that I've had for uh, 15 years maybe. Yeah. I, uh, Is that the first Les Paul custom you got? Yeah, yeah. Just, I bought that one somewhere from this country, dude. somewhere in the middle of Sweden for a cheap buck. Yeah, because that's the thing, if you're living in Sweden, you should say that, it's not like you can walk into a guitar store and find a Les Paul custom. Mm, no, no not, not like used ones. Yeah. Good ones, only the new ones, expensive ones. Yeah. Nah, you have to kind of search the internet for it. Uh, and you're kind of famous for playing Les Paul Customs. I think if you see the most pictures and videos of you, it's Les Paul Customs you see. How come you're gravitating towards just the customs and not like the standards? Uh, I don't know, I just thought that a custom was the best looking guitar. That's, that's the main reason, but uh, I think it's a little bit too thick, the wood is too too heavy. I think today, if I would start to choose a guitar today, I would, I would choose a standard or something lighter. That's why I have an SG as well and, uh, and uh, a Telecaster. Okay. So let's talk about the SG then. Yeah, uh, that, that's a 61 ratio from 2011. With 57s in the, it's regular standard, it, it sounds very, it's very bright and, and, and honest sounding compared to uh, Alas Paul, which is muddier and darker. And then, then you have uh, my Telecaster, which is a single core that's even more uh, uh, revealing, if you, if you put it that way. Yeah, and you're kind of famous, again, for having humbucked equipped yeah. guitars, and now you're playing... Uh, yeah. I don't know if you played... Have you played single coils live before? Yeah, no, this is the first tour. I just find it really um, useful in kind of mellow, mellow songs where you have to um, turn down the, the volume and let the guitar ring. It's kind of hard to, to do with the, with the Les Paul. I found it hard. So much easier with the, with the telly. Yeah. Just so so much brighter and, and, and nicer sounding, sparky, clear. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, I, I've followed Vic for years, I've seen him play with previous bands. And if you don't know this, he, sometimes you could find him with EMGs and oh, yeah, yeah. really high gain guitars. And I mean, it's a complete contrast to the guitars you have today, I suppose, because yeah. now you're having like, Vintage output. It's not yeah, yeah. the super gain. No. How how what made you make that like a change? I just, I just uh, um, today's today's hard rock, heavy metal sound of guitars. It's really frightening to me. It just sounds so so thick. It sounds like a wall. There's no separation in the strings. It's just a wall of sound, which I can appreciate at some point, but. I want that separation, I want to hear the strings as well, so that's why I kind of get lower output uh, pickups and then crank the volume on the, on the amp instead. You mentioned on the SG that you have the, the stock 57 yeah. pickups, but I saw you had a Seymour Duncan in the Les Paul. Yeah, that's you know, a JB. What? It's a JB, yeah. okay. I don't even know if that's a high output, I just... I think, I think it's considered mid-output mid today, <laughs> compared to everything else. <laughs> I gave it to a friend to, to fix it for me, I, there was something wrong with the old, he's like, I got, an, I got a pickup for you, cool. He put it in like eight years ago, and I've had it set. just like, 
And the Telecaster, it has a very, it looks like Bruce Springsteen had played it for 40 years. Yeah, I think it's kind of a replica of his, uh, yeah, I just, there's this guy doing replicas in Denmark, just, I thought it looked good, I wanted to tell you so I bought that, it sounds great as well. Yeah. It looks really beat up, uh, yeah. is, it, is it stock otherwise, I mean the tuners and pickups and everything? No yeah, I think he put it together himself, I don't even think it's a Fender. Okay. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> I don't really care. I'm not endorsed by, by anybody except Marshall. I just don't care. Well, that brings us to Amsterdam, I suppose. Yeah. And again, if you go back to history, you could find the, uh, I mean, Mesa Boogie dual rectifiers, right? Mm -hmm. On stage. Yeah. But you, and then again, you made a change there as well for... Yeah. Well, 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 I actually started with the JCM 800. That was my first time, the 51. I still have that one as a, as a spare. Okay. But... I don't know why I, I I went on and bought a Mesa, and then I, after that I, I went on and uh, I got endorsed by 5150 or the 65 or 65, whatever they call P1, and then I went on to uh, EVH for a while, and then I went back to Marshall. But I always had a Marshall as a I had two amps, most of the time. So I had one of those and always a Marshall for, for, for clarity. And, and so you had been running two albums at the same time, so simultaneously, okay. So no, what? No, no, no. I just plug into one and then go. It's going to change. Okay. <laughs> I just made it to the next story. Uh, you're playing all kinds of venues. You can play all small clubs and giants, yeah. I mean arena gigs. Yeah. Uh, do you have the same amount of amps or do you bring more amps when you play bigger gigs? No, uh, no. I just have a Four, four by twelve, and uh, and one head, and a spear. So what is it that makes you? I mean, you told me now that you had PVs, you had Mazaboogies, and everything, and you went back to Marshall. What what is it about the Marshall that appeals to you? Uh, it's just just got that got that clarity that I want, and because if an amp has got a really high gain, I'm gonna go there, you know. I don't want to, you know, I want to, uh, if I have it, I'm going to use it, and I don't want to use it, so I just tend to use low-gain amplifiers, if you know what I mean. Uh, I met you some years ago, and then we talked about the, what you were playing then, and you told me that the thing you had then was like Plexi-style Marshalls and... Uh, MXR micro amp, mm -hmm. and that was it. Yeah. And now we checked your pedal board, and there's quite a lot of other stuff there now. Yeah, so, it's a, it's a what made you do no, like? Because no, then you talked about, I mean, keep it simple, have it like, it just is, have the one pedal for solos yeah. and nothing else. What made you? What What's the reason for the pedal board you have today? Well, it's not really that. That um, it's really pretty simple, actually, the setup. Uh, I have I have a uh, TS9 tube screamer and then I have an MXR uh, what's it called micro MXR micro that's it I I, I use a TS9 for the for the for the rhythm it's on all, all the time and then for the solo I just put on the MXR as well so you have them both on yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. So it's really simple. That it just looks massive. I have, I have a because a couple of songs that we play require a certain certain sound, like a like a fuzz pedal. So I use a fuzz pedal on, on the song. So I have to have. Okay. So can we go through the signal chain? Well, where does it start with your pedal board? <laughs> you okay. seem to have a, a some kind of uh, switch a looper. Yeah, it's a looper. So does it go into the looper first or? It goes first in, into my, uh, into the wall, okay. and then into the looper, I think. I might be wrong, I don't know. What brand is that loop pedal? It's uh, Carl Martin, I think it's a Danish company. It's, it's an eight, eight, eight looper, got eight loops, and then you get eight different sounds. Eight different pedals and eight different sounds that you can have. You can mix and match however you want. And it's really good because if I only want the TS9, then I just press that and it disconnects all the other pedals. So it kind of doesn't mess with the sound going through five or six pedals. 
So just the pen that you want to use. That's it. Okay. Okay. We got company. Um, and okay, so while well, we talk, what kind of wawa, wawa is it? The first one. Yeah. It's a it's, uh, try baby. It's one of those on cell phone. Because I tend to forget to turn it off. So, so there's that for me. I, I like it. There's a, clean, there's a bit of a click sound when it shuts off. I think. I've tried other balls, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just find it so convenient. Uh, I don't want to make it harder than it is. <laughs> okay, so, so what else could we find on the pedal board? I thought you had three noise suppressors. Yeah. Did I see that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, uh, since I get the TS9 and the source out of the micro amp and, and the. Um, Fast pedal, they, they make a lot of noise. So every each pedal is for the for uh, for those pedals. One noise suppressor per, per pedal, because they go to to one channel each. Oh, okay. So, so that's that's why. The fast pedal is that like what was that like a giant muff or something? It's it's um what do you call mini muff? Okay. Yeah. It's a it's, it's a big muff but a small muff. Small muff. <laughs> that's really funny in Swedish, by the way. Most funny, yeah, it's really funny. Is it funny in English as well? I don't know. Let's, let's, let's uh, find out in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have three, basically three levels of distortion or different kinds of distortion. Is there, yeah. any, is there anything else on the pedal ball like some kind of chorus, slender, phaser? Phaser, yeah, phaser. 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 It's for the, for the clean sound and the EV8 sound, as I call it. Just for fun. Just to kind of color it a little bit. So it's not like you use the same sounds for the same songs all the time every evening or is it, uh, do you may more go by feeling? It depends, yeah. It depends. But well, usually TS9 is on all the time. Because I, I like it, it's really, it's, I have a trouble with low end, sometimes I, I don't like it, it gets too muffly. TS9 kind of tends to that's what people hate about it, that it takes away the low. Because <laughs> you, you get the bass player, I don't need yeah. to fuck with these frequencies, I just get into guitar, uh, awesome. guitar yeah. frequencies. So there's a difference between like the TS-808 uh, or uh, have you tried the other Ibanez? No. Um, uh, no. I, I, I wouldn't even know this difference. Right. I just, <laughs> just play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the final thing in your signal chain, uh, you're using wireless yeah. because you are a band that moves around on stage, I suppose. Yeah. So, what's the unit you're using there? AKG? <laughs> Some <laughs> kind of AKG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're okay. not endorsed by them. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> well, you got a picture. I got pictures. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm gonna edit it into the video now, so it seems like we know what we're talking about. No. <laughs> okay, you have different kind of guitars and they're different scale lengths, like the, the Telecaster is the longest scale length. Do you use the same strings on all guitars? Or, okay, what, what gauge of strings? Um, 10 to 46. Okay, basically. standard. Because we tune down half a step. Uh, for the regular tuning, I use 9 to 42. It's basic. I used to use 10 to 56, 10 to 60, but that's when we dropped down the whole stuff. Oh. I don't like that. So all the guitars are tuned off the sound. It's not like that's one guitar is no. tuned something. Yeah, that's way too confusing. <laughs> that seems to be a theme here. <laughs> Keep it really simple, not to confuse anyone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the final things, uh, picks, what kind of picks are you using? Download. Once. I think it's a, like a Jazz 3, but a big, big version. Oh, okay, the big. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Really? They're big, kind of thick, can't they? Yeah. I used to play the small ones, but they my nail kind of... Yeah, like exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Off yeah. The you know, that's feeling. Yeah. Well, I, I, use, a, I use a power soak as well. Yeah, it, it goes, yeah, it goes between my amp and, and, the, and the cab. Just so it depends on uh, <coughs> how big the stage is. You like to have like super loud volume on stage, or do you keep it kind of? Oh, 
I like to do a lot of work. Because uh, especially with the ears, it's for guitars, for me, yeah, finding ears is kind of difficult. Because I mix the, I the low end from the, from the cab, the, 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 the body. Because it gets so... You can hear everything. <laughs> really, really special. You keep your ears in all the time. Yeah. You take them out just to. Yeah, I, I keep them. Sometimes I take them out. If, if the side fields and the stage sounds good, it depends. If it doesn't sound good, I just tend to keep them out. Everyone wonders what do you have in the mix in your in ears? Is it just your guitar and nothing else? Oh no, our guitar is louder than, than everything else, but, but it's a little bit of everything. I just tend to uh, skip all the unnecessary stuff because it's so hard to fit everything. Just tend to keep the guitar bass, vocals and drums. Just, just so I can hear the, the snare and, and the and the bass drum. I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> just so I know where, where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one to blame if you're out of time then. <laughs> okay, I think you've gone through everything in your rig. No, there's I missed no something. I have a Palmer uh, uh, cab simulator as well. That <coughs> that goes to the front of the house directly, so he doesn't use the cab at all. It's not mic at all. It is for me. Okay, it's just for the just for me. So then I can mix a little bit of, of the, the signal from the from the cab and the, the palmer. Okay. I get to. It's one of those rack mount yeah. palmer things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how come? Well, why did you do this? Is, is, is there a reason for why you're doing this? Uh, keeping it simple, keeping it kind of because uh, it's so different from every gig, from gig to gig, from stage to stage. It's you just especially within years for everybody in, in the band. If, if I tend to, you know, lower the volume on on the cab, then it affects their hearing. You know, yeah. that's why I tend to not fuck with the, the power, just keep it simple and then I don't mess with their mix. Oh no, shit. Everyone will be hearing in and nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Right, I think good. now we've covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the... It sounds more complicated than it is. Do you think about it a lot? I mean, you don't seem like the guy that's like stomping pedals and like standing beside your pedal board all the time. Exactly. Because that's why I got the looper. Because I got maybe three or four sounds that I create with those pedals. And then I just keep it simple instead of pet dancing. I just do a lot of like changing the sound with the volume on the guitars as well. Or yeah. Yeah. I do. Okay then. I want to thank you a lot for this. This has been a first for me and uh, it's been a real pleasure and you, thanks a lot for sharing all, you, all the stuff you can tell about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a Swedish guitar nerd and a rig tour with the one and only superstar Vic Zeno of Hardcore Superstar. See you soon. <laughs>